Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and you guessed it. We are taking a look at iOS 13. Now, I just finished installing this. Boy, was that a battle with Xcode updates, macOS updates, and then actually installing the beta. Anyway guys, if you wanna figure out how you can actually download it and install it on your devices, definitely check out our tutorial. I'll link it in your cards now or down below in this video's description. And again, before we get into things, definitely like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated with the latest Apple and iOS updates. All right, well, let's get directly into the latest iOS updates. Being iOS 13 beta one, it is now out to registered developers. Here's the device support. It looks like the iPhone 6 got cut off. Basically, if you have a 6S, and right after installing this, now when initially setting up, you have the option to choose either light or dark mode. So let's go ahead and start with dark mode and look at that directly within the settings even. Now it's all entirely dark and the background is actually completely black, at least in the setup screen. Anyway, let's get directly into setting up this OS. Well, here we have it guys, a new sleek and clean look. Welcome to iPhone. We can go ahead and swipe up. Now the very first thing that I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna go into general and then go into about. There we have it guys, iOS 13. There is the build number for those who are interested. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my display real fast. Turning on night shift, sure, turn on to 7 a.m. But look at that, right in the control center we have the ability to toggle on and off dark mode just like that. That looks super sweet. So I'll go ahead and turn the brightness up a little bit so you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. Anyway, I'll go ahead and leave dark mode on because that looks super sweet. Uh, excuse me, I'm just gonna go to wallpaper and choose a new wallpaper. And now within stills right there, we have kind of these dynamic wallpapers that will adapt to either light or dark mode. Uh, you have the default red one, which we saw in the presentation, but then you also have these three others. So pretty nice adaptions. Let's go ahead and try this blue one out. And a new little interface down here, that looks pretty sweet. And uh, this would almost be easier if this text was white, but let's go ahead and set both. And let's go ahead and set the normal red one for, let's say the lock screen. So once we head out, there we have it guys. There is our first look at iOS 13 on the home screen. Again, toggling on that new dark mode feature. If you hold down into there and uh, click appearance, then your background wallpaper even changes. That is absolutely incredible. And just to show you guys on the lock screen too, you pull it down, go into there and toggle appearance. And even on the lock screen, your wallpaper changes to dark mode. So swiping over at these widgets look absolutely fantastic. As you guys saw when I was in the settings app, pretty much all of the default applications have a native dark mode now. And I thought this was kind of an interesting change. It looks like the widgets, at least in dark mode, are a little bit cleaner. They no longer have this little header at the top that's a little bit darker. But as you guys can see, comparing this to a jailbroken device on iOS 12 right here, Apple did it pretty similarly to how Noctis and Dune had done it. Granted, I still think Apple's implementation of dark mode just like everything else they do, it looks super clean and super neat. Anyway, the next major change that I wanted to talk about is actually within your Apple ID. Oh, I guess this is a big one. Uh, we now can swipe to type. So if I go ahead and click continue, let's uh, try this out, signing in. So if I just go T-O-N-Y, Tony, there we go. And two, three, two, four, uh, didn't work there. Maybe you can't do it with numbers. M-A-C at Mac. Uh, this is gonna take some getting used to for sure. So even after signing into iCloud, I can already see the new Find My application, which pretty much confirms what the rumors were talking about, that Find My iPhone as well as uh, Find My Friends are being combined into one application. So this was an interesting notification that came up. I actually have a throwaway Apple ID that I use on one phone, but then I have my main Apple ID that I just signed into, and uh, now it says you must transfer this device to your new Apple ID, and you'll be unable to transfer to a different Apple ID for 90 days. I guess to continue this video, we'll go ahead and click transfer and now I think we're finally signed in, but that's an interesting security feature right there. But again, dark mode just looks incredible across all of the applications, photos, app, calendar, messages, everything. Let's actually go into messages. I kind of wanted to take a look at that. Uh, overall, speed's not too bad. New UI and messages here at the top. That looks pretty sweet. Anyway, 
that's kind of where I wanted to go into is uh, maybe we have to go to the settings app and go to messages and it says share name and photo right there in the settings app and so I can go to anyone just like that and share name and photo, toggle that on. Now my name as well as my contact ID should get forwarded to anyone else on an iOS 13 beta. So you no longer have to fill in everyone's contact information manually. You'll actually be able to send all of that metadata when you uh, text somebody basically. And it looks like our uh, install tutorial is done. So definitely check that out if you wanna take a look at some of these features hands on yourselves. And I guess here's the splash screen. What's new in messages, share your name and photos, improved search, and new looks for memojis. So right off the bat, now when jumping into the messages app, it asks you to create your own memoji, which can be used as your profile picture essentially. And uh, I'm just gonna create a really basic one, but there we have it. There's that share name and photos. Not sure why the splash screen didn't come up immediately, but we can go choose name and photo. And uh, I'll just go ahead and keep my previous picture that I had there. And uh, that can be my name, essentially. And uh, it says use this photo everywhere. We'll go ahead and click use. And now it says choose who you wanna share your name and photos with, contacts only or always ask. I'll go contacts only. You know what, I'll go always ask. We'll see who texts me, but yeah, look at that. Tanner's profile picture has already come through as well. That's pretty sweet and a nice little dot right here next to the message threads that have an unread message within them. So that's pretty sweet. But again, just showing you guys the amazing implementation of dark mode, pretty much any application you're in, you don't actually have to close out of it to switch out of dark mode. As you guys can see, within the messages app, you can toggle this on and off. And I love how across the entire system from every application to your widgets, to the home screen wallpaper, all changes immediately. So within the Messages app here again, this is where we have the new Memoji interface where we have Memoji stickers. But anyway, for devices that don't have Face ID like the iPhone 8 or below, or any of the iPads that are not the Pro models, now you can actually create your own custom Memoji and use these predefined stickers right here. And it also looks like we have a few new Memojis right here too, a mouse, an octopus, and a cow. Those are pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Anyways, minor updates, but it's nice to have in the background. So this was probably one of my favorite things, an all new redesigned share sheet where you have contacts right here and overall this just looks a lot nicer and is a lot more organized when you go to share something. The Photos app has been completely redesigned as well, has an awesome new interface where you can view all photos, you can separate it into dates, months, years, things like that. So I thought this was fantastic. Within the Photos app, there's new portrait lighting settings, but the best thing is now you can apply these effects to videos. And even if you start the video and say you wanna record landscape or if it just got recorded wrong in the first place, now you can actually rotate videos. So with that video that I just took of myself, now you have these quick so now with that video that I just took of myself, you can actually rotate the entire video. Oh, I guess you can flip it too, but there we go. We can rotate it around. Uh, you can adjust the rotation manually right here. Let's put it back to normal. But like I said, you can also apply effects directly to videos themselves. So now with all that done, it can save the changes and you can edit videos a little bit better directly within the Photos app. But just as a quick example for the new editing photos interface, so not only is it new, it looks like this now, it has all these icons and you can uh, quickly either auto adjust it or manually adjust it. And now there's a few more things that you can actually change too, like the exposure. Um, the new one I think is this one right here called Brilliance and it basically adjusts the lighting. So as they were explaining on stage, you're moving the lights further away or up close. Granted, this effect isn't perfect, but it definitely, uh, it's definitely an interesting option that they decided to add in. Anyways, I really like the new interface that it has right here. Um, a lot more options, and again, just the ability to auto edit as well. So kind of good and bad here, the Apple Maps application is receiving a huge update, and while in its current state on beta one, it looks absolutely fantastic in dark mode. It doesn't look like any of the major changes have yet to be pushed. Granted, these are supposed to be coming by the end of 2019 throughout the entire United States. 
The Reminders app also got a major update, a bunch of new features here. There's gonna be way too much to talk about in this video, but I'll go ahead and just show you guys kind of what it looks like right when you get started. But man, look at this, a nice new interface to actually get organized. You can have multiple layers of reminders. Um, and again, I'm really excited to dive deeper into this application. Let me know down below if you guys want a separate video just on the Reminders app because there's so much that has changed with this, but just the new user interface looks incredible on its own. So a couple features that I can't really demo or can't figure out an application that uses this yet, the ability to sign in with your Apple account, kind of like how Facebook and Google do it now. I'm really excited for this feature. It will make it super easy and their big selling point here is that it's super secure. You won't be passing on any information that you don't want to to other applications. You basically get to pick and choose or don't send anything at all. Basically it eliminates the step to create an account for every single application. You can just use one login like your Apple ID and it's super secure to do so. Also one that I'm super excited for, uh, if you guys have AirPods with iOS 13, it's gonna be awesome. There's audio sharing, so you can share the audio from your headphones or from your iPhone to yet another pair of AirPods. So two people can be listening to the same thing. That will be awesome for road trips. Another awesome thing is uh, if you receive a message, you'll be able to quickly reply without having to do anything. Uh, you'll basically get the message, it will play on your AirPods, and you can immediately reply if you want to. So a couple nice features there for AirPod users. So let's go ahead and test this. Supposedly one major new feature is for devices with Face ID. Now your phone will be able to recognize your face and by the time you click unlock and swipe up, that's the time they're talking about, that is supposedly 30% faster. So it's gonna be kinda hard to do this uh, with just two hands, but I'll go ahead and crop this together and we're gonna go ahead and do a side by side. So let's start off testing the iPhone XR and uh, I'll go ahead and lock it, unlock. Pretty quick, that, yeah, that really wasn't even noticeable. But as you guys can see, like, by the time I click unlock, by the time I reach, it's already pretty much unlocked and I can swipe up. I've just noticed a big difference going from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 10s Max. And honestly, it's quick as it is. If it's 30% faster, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be mad about that. Anyway guys, the very last thing, obviously for every iOS update that comes out, there's a bunch of stability and performance enhancements. Overall, once iOS is out of beta stages, it's going to be even more secure and more stable and have better performance than iOS 12 ever could be. So with that being the case, if you guys are interested in jailbreaking, definitely do not update to iOS 13 as we're probably not going to see another jailbreak for iOS 12 we're honestly probably gonna see one for iOS 13 next and or at the same time. So that being the case, if you guys are interested in jailbreaking, definitely just stay where you're at. If you guys want the latest and greatest features, go ahead and check out iOS 13. It's a lot of fun. I really haven't had enough time to explore and figure out if there's a bunch of bugs or if it's stable. Very lastly, while we're on performance, let's go ahead and run a quick Geekbench test real fast and see what we're looking at here on the iPhone XR. But overall, I'm really enjoying this so far. I was kinda let down that there weren't a few new features. Let's see, I haven't even looked. Is there a new volume? Oh my God, there's a new volume HUD! I didn't even see that. No way. Look at that, guys. It pops up, oh my God, and then it skims away. Get out of here. Let's look at this on the home screen. Look at that. That is absolutely incredible, guys. All right, that just made my day. Anyway, let's get back into doing the Geekbench test. All right, so here are the results, guys. We got iOS 12 here on the right and iOS 13 on the left. And again, pretty outstanding results. That multi-core score is looking great. So even for the very first beta, it looks like it's performing pretty well. Anyway guys, I'll definitely do an update video on letting you know how my experience is on iOS 13 during this first week. Anyway, these are just some of the major features coming to iOS. This isn't even touching on iPad, which now actually has its own operating system.
So, might have to do a separate video just on that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Taking a look at iOS 13 hands-on. Definitely stay tuned as we'll have some more awesome content coming later this week. Before you guys head out, definitely like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated when we post new videos just like this one. Anyway, thank you so much for making it to the end, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.